Hey everyone, Pete here. Slightly different video uh, today. Instead of building something, I'm going to try and get my industrial um, dust extractor, fine chip dust extractor, to interface with uh, my controller down here. So in this episode, we're going to go and try and get that controlled by that. Right, first things first is to talk about uh, the actual extractor itself. Um, it's quite large. It's a cyclone dust extractor with a fine filter on the left. Now, the premise around this project here is to keep this functioning as it is, um, but with CNC control. So what I want to be able to do is still press the green button and the emergency stop button. Um, for example, when I'm using the um, router table, or I've got a belt sander now, I want to be able to turn this on in absence of the CNC machine uh, and still use it as I normally would. Um, so keeping all the same safety features, etc, etc. Now this box here has a um, contactor start, so you have to, um, it won't, if you leave it on and you apply power, it won't start up automatically, you have to apply power, then hit the green button, and then obviously the red button stops it. Now, this extractor is quite fancy in the fact that it has a um, some paddles inside the fine filter so at the end of its uh, operation it will spin and flick all the ballows both ways um, this just helps keep, keep the filter clean from any fine dust that might have accumulated in it and you can kind of see here I've never emptied this bag actually since I've owned it so you, it didn't, not a lot of dust gets down this side but at the end when you turn it off there's a little motor on the top that like you can probably see there that just spins some paddle wheels around and just flicks all the internal um, wa wa wafers of the filter just to get any fine dust to drop down to the bottom. Now, if we were to control that via the CNC, each time you do a job or a change of bit, you'll turn this off and the ballows will start to uh, clean themselves. Now. I kind of want to avoid that because I don't know, I've never had one of these before, now I don't know how, how many times that thing can spin around without actually wearing the inside of the filter out. So I want to try and minimise that as much as possible. Um, so at the end of the day I'll hit the emergency stop button and then that will trigger the cleaning cycle to start. So what I'm thinking of doing is to use this, to get this to interface with the controller, uh, my routine would be come in turn it on, well, obviously the motor, we want to be able to control the motor from turning on and off uh, and then at the end of the day press the stop button and it will do its cleaning re regime. I don't want to try and reprogram or recontrol the top motor that controls the cleaning and um, I just kind of want to leave it standalone as it is. So what I propose to do, we'll take this off, uh, keep the uh, contact to style arrangement for the start and go and just add a series switch that is controlled via the CNC or a manual switch so I can switch between normal operation and CNC operation. So that's that's the goal. Let's see what parts we've got to try and make it happen. So over here, I've uh, got a couple of things. I've got a 20 amp relay, because it's over 2.2 kilowatt motor. Um, the wall plug's rated at 16 amps, so I've got a 20 amp relay. And this is a 12 volt relay. Um, that I'm going to control via the MOSFETs on the root controller and then I propose to use this switch to be the manual operation mode. Got a couple of connectors, a little bit of wires, a couple of crimps, I've got a bit of heat, heat shrink to the side and some just standard, oh, I don't even know what size cable this is, it's not particularly huge, I think this is just, oh actually, it is 1mm squared cable that proposed to be the cable that joins between the two. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is kind of, what I'm thinking is out the top there, kind of along the wall, somewhere around here, around the back here, down the back. And then into the top there, I've got, I've already kind of like pre-populated some avionic style connectors to plug into. And then I'm gonna occupy one of the MOSFET ports on the side here. So, right, let's crack on. I'll 
go through the build and then I'll show you a bit more about the software side of things. I'll give you a quick overview of what I've done. I'm no electrician, so take it as you wish. Uh, the motor feed comes out the top to the motor at the top. So this is the uh, switch live for enabling the motor. And you can see I've got two wires coming out of that. One going to the relay, and then that goes into the contactor. Uh, the other side goes to a switch, and then that other side of that switch goes to the contactor. So effectively, I've got a relay and a switch in parallel uh, of one another. So on the front of the box, I've got a switch that I can leave it in manual mode uh, and it will just turn on as it normally would. Or if I flick it up and um, open that switch, it will go into through this relay so it can be controlled by the CNC. So I'll go and button that back up and I'll get the cable run over to the actual CNC and start testing it. So off camera, I've just gone and ran the cable around the room to the, uh, to the CNC and this is the other end of the cable that I cut, cut off the spool, uh, so I just need to add the connector and then I'll show you inside the uh, cabinet. Moving into the cabinet, you can see I've already got some avionics style um, connectors pre-installed but no trailing cables underneath so that cable I made earlier with the uh, um, wire ferrules on is going to replace one that's already in here and just run down to one of the MOSFET areas of the controller now I do have relays uh, on the root controller on this side here but I don't I didn't fancy running a large cable all the way from the dust extractor to here just to switch in the controller so instead I'm going to use the MOSFET to drive the re a, a remote relay in the box of the dust extractor well that's the plan anyway um, let's see if it works out and uh, get this swapped out get this installed and uh, get on with the software Right, before I try it with the CNC, let's just make sure it still works manually. So I've just put, uh, I've reapplied the power. We're in manual mode, so hopefully, once you stop it out, it should start. Whilst that spins down, uh, in a few seconds, the ballows will start to um, clean themselves and this is what I was trying to make sure when we control it via CNC, we avoid any second now the motor will kick in. Perfect, so manual mode, take two, works as expected. Um, so now if I flip this into CNC mode and we press the um, green button, nothing should happen but the contacts just should turn on, but the motor won't start working. So I don't know if you heard the clonk, the contact is on. Now the relay is switched off. I need to get to Fluid NC to set up uh, the pin that will control this. And then hopefully we can control it from over there. And as you know, now, even though the dust extractor isn't on, the ballows haven't started cleaning themselves. So let's hop over into the software and show you what needs configuring. 
So you would have seen me wiring uh, this connect here to the um, dust extractor and I've got that connected to FET2. So that's what we need to define in software to control turning on and off the uh, dust extractor. Um, in this application, I think I'm gonna repurpose the coolant signal as it's easily controlled via G-code. And most of the time you can just tell it to do uh, flood coolant and it will turn on the dust extractor anyway. On this particular machine, I'm not gonna ever use flood. I'm most likely gonna use mist, so I'm gonna keep that one spare because I have actually got an airline and solenoid running up to the uh, spindle head. So if I'm ever doing um, aluminium or something on the machine, it works out quite well. So FET2 is what we're connected to. Let's jump in the software and make sure it's configured. So um, one thing that most people aren't aware of, uh, Root CNC has its dedicated wiki now. Um, that's quite handy to navigate through some of the uh, builds, how to um, frequently, frequently asked questions, how to do stuff and um, a bit about the root controller itself. So on the left hand side, if we go to pin definitions on the root controller, we need to search for FET underscore three. Sorry, not three, two, nearly confused myself. So we are on GPIO uh, 33. If we hop into the configuration for this particular machine, um, I've got coolant, flood GPIO 33 already uploaded onto the controller um, so it should be as simple as send the M8 command to turn it on and the M9 command to turn it off so let's turn this on get it plugged in turn it on so before I send it there's two possibilities one it works straight away two it doesn't work because I've got the polarity wrong on the coil uh, that drives the relay so let's find out. Uh, M8. I guess you could hear it. And M9 turns it off. Kind of cool. So after the M9 command, because we're only switching the motor on and off rather than the whole uh, control that uh, cleans itself, the motor will spin down and it, it thinks it's still running right. So I can do multiple jobs, turning it on, turning it off. And then at the end of the day, all I intend to do is go up to it and hit the emergency stop button. Um, and then it will clean itself once I've finished. So. That's a quick video on how I wired up my dust extractor to be controlled via Fluid NC and the root controller. Please like, comment and subscribe. If you're interested or want to know a bit more about the Root CNC projects, check out the website rootcnc.com um, or if you're building one, check out the wiki. It is forever growing. Uh, more information is getting added over time. So check that out and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please stay around for the next one. Take care. Bye.